Hello. In this video, we're going to introduce the Cauchy-Riemann equations, talk about what they are, and uh, what questions they help answer. This video is meant to supplement and not replace the reading that you'll do in your text. But to get started, let's talk about what exactly the Cauchy-Riemann equations are. They are simply a pair of equations uh, that look like this. The partial derivative of u with respect to x is equal to the partial derivative of v with respect to y, and the partial of u with respect to y is the opposite of the partial of v with respect to x. Now these are the equations themselves, but the equations come in the middle of a theorem, which looks like this. We're going to suppose that f, which has real part u and imaginary part v, is a differentiable function at a point z. Then at that point z, the partial derivatives, the first order partial derivatives, the ones you see here, all exist. And in fact, they have to equal each other in the way described by the equations. So the Cauchy-Riemann equations come to, uh, inside of a statement about the real and imaginary parts of a differentiable function. These things have to be true in order for a function to be differentiable. If the function is differentiable, these things will happen. All right. Now, these are the equations that you would run into if you, your function was defined in terms of x and y, the Cartesian form of a complex number. If your complex numbers are uh, written in polar form, then the uh, corresponding Cauchy-Riemann equations have a slightly different form. They look like this. All right, now, where does this come from? What motivates our study of the uh, Cauchy-Riemann equations? Well, You'll see uh, as we go along that the Cauchy-Riemann equations are very useful, so you could just say they're useful. But one thing that um, you might run into, and we have seen as we've looked at limits and differentiability, are a few differences that happen uh, depending on how your function is defined. For instance, in the section on derivatives, you probably saw that many uh, functions of z, such as polynomials in z, rational functions in z, and as we'll see later in the semester, exponential, trigonometric, and so on. These functions that are defined in terms of z are often differentiable. And what's more, the, uh, the same rules of derivatives that you learned in first semester calculus apply in an ana analogous way to these functions of z. On the other hand, you saw an example yesterday, and uh, you'll see other examples in the text, of functions that are not differentiable, and these functions that are not differentiable often have the form where they are defined in terms of x and of y. So instead of saying something like f of z equals z squared, we'll have f of z equals 2x plus 3iy. So we have a real part and an imaginary part defined not in terms of z, but in terms of the real and the imaginary parts of z. Now, we saw that this function 2x plus 3iy is not differentiable. And to sort of recap why that is, you'll remember that to see if it was differentiable, you evaluated the limit that defines the derivative. Now, after a little bit of manipulation, skipping right to the end, you simplified this limit down to this fraction, which uh, is in terms of delta x and delta y as these approach 0. Now remember, in complex analysis, in order for a limit to exist, it needs to have the same uh, value as uh, you approach your limiting point from any direction. And as we simplified this expression, we thought about two different paths. We thought, what happens as delta z approaches 0 along the real axis? In that case, the y-coordinates aren't changing at all, so delta y equals 0, and as you simplify your fraction in that case, the fraction has a value of 2 everywhere along the real axis, and so you might say, well, the limit should be 2. But if you looked at a different path as you approached 0 along the imaginary axis, well, that would mean that delta x was equal to 0, and your delta y is what is changing. And in that situation, the fraction always has a value of 3. Since you do not have a single value that the fraction approaches as uh, delta z approaches 0, we would say the derivative does not exist because the limit does not. All right, now keep in mind this example. Uh, in the other video where we talk about the proof of the Cauchy-Riemann theorem, you'll see that we use many of the same ideas. Thinking back to the worksheet yesterday, though, um, a few groups noticed that uh, the 2 and the 3 there 
are what determine the coefficients on the delta x and the delta y, and they determine uh, the values that delta z approaches from these two different directions. So you can imagine that this would uh, this property of not being a differentiable would happen for lots of different functions that look like this. And in fact, the only way you could get a differentiable function was if these two numbers were the same. If they were, then the value of the fraction would be the same as you approached uh, the origin from those two directions. Now, if that were the case, if we had the same number in both the first and the second part, call it a, if f of z were ax plus ay, aiy, then we could factor the a out, we'd have f of z is a times x plus iy, or in other words, f of z would equal az. That's the only function where uh, the, the limit will exist, any, a function of this form anyway. And once again, that is a function that you can write just in terms of z, and you don't have to write it in terms of specifically x and y. All right, so because we have these differences uh, in terms of differentiability, we'd like to know something about what's going on here. What's also important is that a lot of our functions are defined in this way. They're defined in terms of x and y. And so how are we going to use what we know about differentiability when those statements were all about functions that defined in terms of z, and most of the functions that we encounter are defined in terms of x and y? Well, this brings us to the questions that you should keep in mind as you read the section on the Cauchy-Riemann equations. First of all, we'd like to know if there's a test we can apply to decide whether a function defined in this way is or is not differentiable. And the Cauchy-Riemann equations answer that question for us. Second question, if f is defined in terms of x and y, how do we compute the derivative f prime of z? All right, we've just asked about whether the derivative exists or not. But remember, if the derivative does exist, you'd like to be able to compute it nicely. And we have a bunch of rules from calculus that allow us to do that, and they, these rules carry over to complex analysis. But how do you take a function defined in this way, where you don't readily see a z, and take the derivative to find f prime of z? Watch for that answer as you read the section. Finally, um, what facts about differentiable and analytic functions do the Cauchy-Riemann equations enable us to deduce or prove? As your text points out in, uh, in the previous section, in complex analysis, the important or the interesting question is not so much what the derivative is. It's what you can say about a function knowing that the derivative exists. Watch for examples of uh, statements like that, statements that apply um, because the Cauchy-Riemann equations hold, or statements that will ensure that the Cauchy-Riemann equations hold. All right, we'll see you in the next video where we'll give a proof of the Cauchy-Riemann theorem.